on YouTube, Focus Tans here, and uh, in today's episode, we're going to be removing the uh, engine and trans out of this car, out of this, the S4, I call it my S4, and we're also going to be looking at some pretty dangerous uh, components that could cause you to have a pretty serious injury, um, and this is going to be all geared towards the front suspension, we're going to be changing out those parts today so that we can get rid of that go steering and... Uh, and this raspy noise that comes from those parts. So let's go ahead and dive in, stay tuned. So foremost, we gotta get the car jacked up. So now let's uh, get to taking the wheels off. And uh, I've already removed the engine and I'll show you some clips of that. All right, so uh, uh, the engine's still in the car. <laughs> We got the we got the engine out and uh here it is and it's glory uh it's pretty greasy pretty grimy uh i can't wait to get it apart so that i can look and see what uh actually is wrong with the engine and trans because the engine seemed to have problems too but we'll get to that at a later date in our uh our focus tans diagnostic series um but we're gonna get this wheel off and start looking at what the issues are. A couple of videos back, I did an episode that was geared towards um, changing out the uh, suspension components. Well, actually, this is the steering components, the inner or the outer tie rod or inner tie rod on the ST. But today, we get to do the same thing on the S4. We get to see. Guess what happened to the inner and outer? Uh, these were like cheaper inner and outer tie rods. Um, basically, this is before I even started the uh, Focus Hands channel. Uh, I had these replaced at the shop. So check this out. I'm gonna hit down with this uh, 20 banger right here. I'm gonna hit down on it and see what happens. A A good tie rod, inner tie rod, would never allow that to happen. This thing is flopping around. And if you look back here, oh, let me let me just zoom you in here. If you look back here, the uh, the bellow is all destroyed, and this ball joint is just there's just nothing keeping this thing on. Look how easy that is. That is very very bad. I'm surprised this thing didn't come off on me when I was driving. All right, comparison time. So here's what the old one looks like. Look at all that, look at all that play. Right? So if yours is like this, you need to replace it ASAP. Now, obviously I use the uh, uh, chassis components and uh, parts from ProForged. So shout out to them for sending this over. The tie rod looks like and of course if you watch the video you've seen this already I cannot do that on this one whereas you can do this all day on this one so obviously I can't even spin this without spinning the whole thing so this has to go and this looks like an original so I'm surprised it lasted this long so put this one in all right, so I've got the inner tie rod on and torqued. Uh, here's the bellow that's going to go on. Um, over there you can see the, uh, the torn bellow. Uh, you're definitely going to have to replace this. Uh, you can get hose clamps, uh, but also a, uh, what is this, a tie rod? I mean, not a tie rod, but a uh, zip tie will also work, and that's what I'm going to use for this one. But let's get this installed. So we're going to get a good look at the outer tie rods here. So this is the new one, obviously. And here's, here's the old one uh, that needs to be replaced. So let's do that. I'm going to torque it down to 35 foot-pounds using a uh, 17 millimeter socket. Let's 
I used to tight, tighten this bolt down to 55 foot pounds and I was definitely over torquing it. So you definitely want to learn from someone who's already done it and or check your Haynes manual to see what it needs to be torqued to. Anyway, stay tuned. Alright, so you want to see what uh, bad wheel hubs look like and wheel bearings? Look at that. Yeah. Look at that side to side play. Let me bring you over here so you can see. Rotate it back and forth. Push it back and forth. And then up. Just look at it on the inside. Yeah, it's not supposed to do this. These gotta come off. We're looking at the right side here and uh, check it out. Really easily move this back and forth. These gotta come out too. So, first and foremost, we're gonna change out that. And then we'll move on to this in the next episode. Alright YouTube, so I'm getting ready to take the transmission off of the car. This is the uh, 2 o engine. I'm going to be breaking down and probably parting out. But, uh, so the, the uh, flywheel has these little bolts here. These are 15 millimeter bolts. And if you're doing this with, on a one man job, um, I'll tell you a little trick. Or I'll show you a little trick that I did to get these off. Let me set it up real quick for you. So what I did is I took this, uh, this ratchet and a pipe extension and I put it directly on the, uh, the crankshaft uh, or harmonic pulley bolt and I got it on there like that right there. So when I spent it, uh, it, it applied a, a back pressure uh, for the bolt when I went to take them off over here. So you can, you can move this you know, up or down when you need to to spin the uh, the flywheel. So we'll do that right now. Flip it the right way. That's right. One second. All right, so when you flip this, you'll see how your extension will move the flywheel, right? And you can get at those bolts. And I found once you got halfway right here, you would flip this back to the ground, somewhere over here, like that. And then you could go and get your, if you have one of these, it's super easy to get in there and just get it off. But if you don't, you can use Old Tried and Faithful, the spanner here, and I took two of these and uh, I basically made a, a, a box wrench extension, uh, getting them on here like that, and then using this as an extra lever to pry it up. So that's what I suggest um, if you're gonna do this part. All right, let me finish getting this transmission off and we'll continue, stay tuned. All right, so transmission's out and uh, right now I'm trying to learn how to take the uh, torque converter off. I don't yet know how to do that, but I will figure it out. You know me. And the new transmission uh, I'm due to pick up today, I believe. Um, so I need to go make arrangements for that. But this one looks pretty good. The new one uh, has an issue right here on the bell housing. So I'll need to pull this uh, transmission casing off and put it on the new transmission case so that I can run this mount and I might not even need to this mount I might be able to leave it alone um, but we'll see all right stay tuned for updates all right for starters you call this a flywheel but look how this thing is just, just it's basically a plate this is a plate I'll probably turn this into a, a plate I use at the house like this thing is super light. Let's compare this, you see that one? Let's compare this to the one that comes on the 2-3. Oh, this thing is slightly, not slightly, this thing is much heavier than 
that uh, 2.0. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to use a 2.0 flywheel. Um, and I won't be able to use the 2.3 flywheel. And this thing is like, literally can pick it up and just fling this shit across the yard. Anyway. Alright, so got the flywheel bolts on, flywheels on the engine. Uh, and we need to look up what are the flywheel bolt torque specs. And you can see right here, sorry about the lighting. Um, let's see if I can help you with that. There we go. Okay, flywheel bolts, you got three steps, one, two, three. And of those three steps, you got 37, 50, and 83 that you got to do. Uh, and over here, shout out to the new engine, but over here, you see the contraption I have set up um, at the reverse. So now I want to tighten the flywheel bolts. So I need someone to hold on the back side. So I have my little jury rigged um, helper here to help me hold the back side so the crank doesn't spin. And that way I can tighten down these bolts. So let's do that. The flywheel is torqued to specification according to the Haynes manual over there. Uh, next thing, obviously, is going to be getting the new transmission uh, mounted and whatnot. Uh, I need to get the brackets to lift the engine off of the 2.0 and put it on 2.3. And uh, we should be in business, you know, now. Uh, this is getting hella exciting. So hopefully you're enjoying this series as much as I am. Uh, I didn't know that I would like working on cars as much, but hey, you know, this this stuff is therapeutic, actually. But anyway, let's uh, let's keep going with this and see how far we can get before we call it a day. Stay tuned. Just in case you were wondering, here's what the PVC hose looks like after 156,000 miles on the Focus. Uh, Basically, this isn't good, Prince. This isn't good at all. It's, uh, I'm surprised. I'm really surprised about a lot about this car. Interesting, interestingly, the pattern, bolt pattern for the intake manifold was a little different on the 2.0 than the 2.3. Uh, I found that to be pretty cool. Uh, but I'm glad to say goodbye and hello 2.3. So for some of you that may not know this, um, this is how you take off the torque converter. Uh, what you want to do is get your hands in here in a spot and you want to wiggle it back and forth until it pops off like that. You don't need any special tools to get it off. You just got to stick your hands in there and you got to wiggle it while pulling up on it at the same time and you'll get it out. Uh, you know, I didn't know that. So, uh, I just was fiddling around with it and it popped up like you just saw. So hopefully that helps you. But I'm still not sure why this trans just decided to call it quits. It seems pretty good. So here's the bell housing side of this automatic trans. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna remove all of these bolts here and uh, I'm gonna take this bell housing off. We're gonna see what's on the inside of this thing. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah, right here. All right, focus crew. So we got the new uh, transmission in and you know, there are some things I'm gonna have to do to it to get it ready uh, for service here and we'll kind of dive into those as we get closer to getting it ready for service. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get it un, un, uncrated here and uh, find a spot for it over here so that I can start working on it. Let's get to it.
So after much time, the uh, transmission is now put back together uh, as far as the bell housing goes. Let me go ahead and flip it up, set it up straight. Oh, easy there, easy, easy, easy. All right, so it's up straight. Get that in the hole there. Uh, all this is torqued, torqued down. Uh, I got sealant. You can see the sealant that's kind of squeezed out here. It's what you want to see along the side. I use ultra gray um, for high torque. Uh, and it's kind of squeezing out. So you want to see that as you go to torque these down. I didn't torque them too much, uh, 25 foot pounds. I couldn't find it in the uh, Haynes manual for torquing the inner bolts. So I torqued everything really, really carefully down to 25 foot pounds. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, like I said, I couldn't find anything. So there's a seal here missing. And I know uh, I'm waiting on that to come in so that I can put that on and clean that up. And we'll be good to reassemble this bad boy. Uh, we'll, we of course want to put some uh, Mercon 5 in the torque converter. We'll turn it sideways, put some Mercon 5 in the torque converter, and probably like a, a, a quart or so in there, and we'll be ready to go. Uh, to hook this thing back up to the engine, and voila.